when you consider the untapped coastal assets of Lagos, the effervescent arts and culture scene, and the booming entertainment industry, tourism in this state shows promising signs. Lagos is, um, it has everything. Everybody who comes to Lagos has one thing, and that is Lagos evokes an emotion in you. It's always fascinating just to learn something new about the history and... The food is an art. Food, a four euro. Why the people come to Nigeria, they don't come to see the five star. They come to see how we live, what we eat, how we eat together. In one bowl, we do our pounded yam with a goosey soup. And when you eat it like this, mm. So Lagos have everything. The best comma, which we call Turkey, Malu Oniye. Ah. We have 180 kilometers of unspoiled uh, coastline. 22% of Lagos is water. So there's potential for, for, for uh, resorts on the beaches, uh, bars, restaurants, uh, uh, malls, cinemas, and the population to consume it already resides here. You don't have to import them. They are here. There is a huge amount of interest in Lagos, uh, both from within and more importantly, from outside the shores of Nigeria. So as a tourism, destination. Uh, there is no doubt that Lagos is uh, a huge, huge potential. Uh, the question is how we can harness uh, our resources to make sure we bring it uh, to the highest level. In the city of Lagos, opportunities exist to further expand tourism yet challenges remain. The lack of adequate infrastructure is a major issue in the city, with critical investments required in the transportation and power sectors. For local and foreign investors, other constraints exist such as the lack of access to finance, land availability, security concerns, inadequate public health facilities and bureaucracy. As a result, tourism in Lagos has not reached its full potential. For every single challenge you see in Lagos State, there are probably about four or five different opportunities attached to that challenge. So it's either you look at this as this glass is half full or half empty. But that does not mean that we are running away or we are shying away from the fact that there are many things we should bring together to make sure that uh, whatever challenges we have today, we actually harness. It is possible for people to get cynical to say, well, it's just all talks in tourism and this and that. But it's not only tourism. Uh, look at our infrastructure in terms of uh, transportation, for instance. Uh, that is not a challenge that was born yesterday. Lagos wasn't built for nearly 22 million people. And on record today, Lagos State has the highest rate of uh, uh, urban drift, so to say, in terms of internal migration. That is, people migrating from other parts of Nigeria into Lagos State. We are about 85 per hour, not even per day, which is the world fastest, faster than the migration you have in places like New York, for instance. So when you have that kind of data uh, to deal with, it, it's not a question of challenges. It's a question of what Lagos was designed for originally and how Lagos should transform itself to be able to cope with what being a mega city, being a functional city, as trust upon its laps. For existing investors in the tourism industry in Lagos, living with these challenges has become a norm. The first is Nepa. So the electricity, I don't even have electricity here. Then the diesel has jumped up to 180 naira per liter, and every day I must use 200 liter. I thank God that I'm an artist. So whenever I see that not money is not coming in, the, I cannot close the gallery down because this is a place where they, what, what make them happy when they come and see the, so I just travel and do the lecture. I teach in different states in US to get dollar, come back and use it to buy this, to enjoy with my people. The issue of power, we practically run the hotel on generators and diesel is expensive. The generators break down 
or they age very quickly. And that is a cost element that is too big uh, to support, especially if your size is not uh, a very big sized hotel. Challenges of infrastructural development, challenges of security, challenges of economic uh, challenges that we have currently, especially with all the issues with the slowdown in the economy, the low uh, oil prices and all these kind of things that are happening at the moment. So we are facing the same challenges and the same problems and we we'll try to see how we can get to the other side when this crisis is over. It is still a struggle because um, destinations like you know first Nigerians are not they don't dine out that much um, so there's a tendency for you to have mostly foreigners eating out and then um, maybe Nigerians of a particular income bracket. So there is that challenge, but um, because of the location that we're, the way we, we're, where we are, we've been very fortunate because we have the business market that kind of like um, patronize us. Um, in addition to that, it's a very difficult climate also because you tend to have incentives for um, sectors like this, but we don't have those breaks. So I'm being taxed, I'm paying like um, any other institution like the um, telecoms institutions and banking financial sector we, we don't rival them in terms of income generation so we would imagine that there will be incentives and some tax breaks for institutions like ours um, maybe in the future this is an area that government would like to 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 look at um, another challenge obviously is skill sets imagine when we started out 13 years ago there was very little going on in um, in the hospitality business, in the hospitality sector. So you had very few people skilled in service. Challenges and anything is relative. Uh, any business, any invest, uh, investment, uh, anyone goes to uh, must have some kind of challenges. But um, as far as uh, putting up La Manga here in Elashe, um, I mean, it, it's enormous. You're talking about uh, a location that is not accessible by road. So you have that marine logistics um, challenge to contend with. Um, obviously, uh, labor market, uh, you need to come up with a very good marine grade material, which is usually not readily available here in Nigeria. Uh, so all those technical issues, uh, but as far as dealing with the people, Elisha and Elisha people are very wonderful. Uh, but again, um, I think things could have been a lot better if uh, the government creates some kind of soft landing for these kind of uh, opportunities. Um, and, and I think that would have made a lot of things a lot easier. The community, title to land and finance. And I say community because without the community, you can't even, you can't even get in. You have to earn the trust of the community, they have to buy into what you're trying to do. And at the first base, you're acquiring land from the community, even though land belongs to the state. But you have to come down from below and work your way upwards. Title, number two, is because without title, there's no financing. Because in Nigeria, as you know, if there's no CFO, they say there's no financing. So you have to start from title. And then financing, I think, is pretty easy because the business actually makes sense. The Lagos State Government must play its part in addressing the challenges that exist for investors in the tourism sector. We really need uh, a government who understands the potential. So one thing is for an investor to see it, because at the end of the day, you need to sell that idea to the government and the government has to have a buy-in into it. So we need a government that takes tourism seriously. We've had a series of lip singing and you know, nobody's doing anything. The point is, in order for somebody to take tourism in Lagos to the next level, you need somebody to understand the potential and the know-how to do that transformation. We need the roads leading to the hotels to, to be well maintained, to be built up, so that people will not have to think about all the portals they have to cross to come here. So we need the government to consider that. We also need security to be improved. We don't want to hear about theft, about muggings around the area where we are. Indeed, in the whole of Lagos, we want the security perception to be good. And then we also have the issue of multiple taxation. We want Lagos State agencies, for instance, uh, to agree what is a fair um,
cost we should pay for licenses, operating licenses, for um, local government licenses. We have a problem if they increase it unilaterally, they double it every year, and then they threaten once you don't accept, once you challenge and once you don't accept their fees. That's a problem. When they threaten you, that they will shut you down at every little pretext. That is not investor friendly. I think what Lagos, the government can do is to actually give us um, easy access to title, to have discussions with them and see how we can get what we call the Lagos State title and also to see how Lagos State itself can um, assist us when it comes to actually paying for that title. We have to consider, do we pay for title upfront or do we invest those funds in the development? Efforts are being made to address the day-to-day -day challenges faced by investors in the state. In terms of title, I think title has also, the acquisition of title has also been streamlined because of course you've got the EC of O now. Whether you like it or not, technology is being brought to bear on a lot of things to simplify life for people in the tourism, not just the tourism industry, but to simplify life for the, the, the Lagosians that, are, that are, 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 are doing business in Lagos. In the Ministry of Tourism, we're also looking at how to make things easier in terms of doing business with government. So, for example, the, uh, uh, the, the various charges that are constitutionally due to government from all the tourism establishments, we're trying to harmonize them into simple charges. We're trying to make payment easy. In spite of the challenges, Lagos is focused on being an attractive market for investors in tourism. The government plans to develop the water transportation sector, and this could significantly boost tourist activities in the state. The government is dredging from Lagos Island to Ekwe and the other way to Badagri. So those places also become accessible by, by sea. We've got the island resorts of from uh, Elashia all the way to Badagri, Agaja, you know, uh, all the way down the peninsula this way. Now, all those areas are also areas with huge potential that, that tourism-related establishments could develop. drive towards developing the tourism sector, the Lagos State Government seeks partnerships with private investors to undertake the development and delivery of a wide range of facilities in the state. We are encouraging um, investment in a whole lot of areas, theme parks, uh, theatres, cinemas, um, uh, clubs, concerts, concert halls and hotels. Uh, because you can't have a city of 21 million people and the only form of entertainment will be the television. Uh, now that Lagos is safe and secure, we need Lagosians to go out as they used to, to go to visiting uh, uh, theme parks, to go to the beaches, uh, to go to uh, a cinema, theatre halls, concerts, convention centres. But we need to encourage people to invest in those areas because we have the advantage of the people. You know, uh, millions and millions of people, you know, are here. The purchasing power is high. And that will be a source of encouragement for those who want to invest 
in ensuring that Lagos becomes uh, the next destination of choice. Lagos needs a zoo. You know, we've got to send our kids abroad to see a lion or an elephant. Lagos needs resorts and spas, medium to large sizes. Uh, uh, Lagos is short of 8,000 hotel rooms. Nigeria has the highest number of hotel rooms in Africa. Lagos has the highest number of hotel rooms in Nigeria. But Lagos is still short. We've got opportunities for an institute of hospitality to provide the feedstock for this tourism establishment. We've got an opportunity for a film school that will help us become number one in the world in terms of volume and hopefully uh, in terms of quality. We dominate African music. We would like uh, a school of music uh, to again improve the quality of what Lagos is already producing so much of. The government aims to make life easier for potential investors in the tourism sector by breaking the bureaucratic bottleneck. Lagos Global, is, which is the office I, I have the opportunity of, of heading, is not only working to ease, you know, uh, or to make life easier for, or for tourists or, or in the tourism sector. The truth is, Lagos Global deals with the entirety of the whole panoply of investment in Lagos State. So whichever area you are dealing with, Lagos Global is there to assist. Uh, you could have seen uh, we facilitated the signing of MOU on Fort Milan Bridge. Uh, we had Kuramo, we had uh, the agri uh, agricultural industry uh, in terms of you know, the production of rice meal in, in Lagos State. And so there are so many more. We are signing a, a MOU between uh, Dubai Smart City and Lagos State to be able to develop a wide array of... Uh, now, all these might not be first and foremost tell us about tourism but they are going to promote tourism because when you develop as an example more road infrastructure when you develop you know uh, 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 a, a much a much more efficient energy system in your state is going to bring in influx of people that want to come and do business with you and when they do business with you they want also to go around to holiday in your country to see what you've got to offer them. They want to go to different places in the northern part of the country, the eastern part, the southwestern part, and so on and so forth. They want to see many things that Lagos has got to offer them, which they may not be able to see at a full stretch for now. So Lagos Global is doing its utmost best, uh, first and foremost, in partnering with all investors, regardless of what sector we are talking about. Lagos State Governor Akinwumi Ambode emphasizes the use of tourism, hospitality, entertainment, art and sport to create job opportunities, thus positioning Lagos State as a destination with rich entertainment content. In the Governor's first year in office, he has attracted proposals from investors in the area of tourism. There are quite a good number of proposals that we have had uh, that are tourism focused. Um, especially when you talk about the hospitality industry. And that is one area that our country um, and our state needs to do a lot more work to be able to attract the kind of uh, investors uh, that you need in Lagos State. Um, uh, we also we've got proposals, for instance, in people want to build uh, international convention centers in Lagos State, uh, which would be fantastically useful uh, for us. People want to develop theme parks in Lagos. Uh, people want to develop you know, uh, beach resorts in Lagos and so many more fantastic you know, uh, uh, ideas. Uh, many of them are on my table and we are dealing with them currently. Uh, some of them have already been approved and you'll be hearing very soon uh, which, which one and which ones we have already uh, approved. So there is a good number of proposals uh, in tourism. Uh, that we are very happy that uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a hugely rewarding area that the government is focusing on. Four existing players in the tourism, arts and culture scene in Lagos, competition from discerning investors is welcome. We are the basement level of the hospitality industry in the country. Um, I think Lagos needs, Nigeria needs um, clearly over 
over 15,000 uh, room nights and we are barely 10,000 for now, probably even more. Uh, Lagos needs even far more and uh, we're just scratching we're just scratching the, uh, the beginning of the industry. If you look at the opportunities in this sector, it's phenomenal. If you, if you think uh, of the size of Nigeria, the numbers, it's a numbers game. We have so many people in Nigeria and so many visitors and investors coming into Nigeria. If we had destinations, if we had um, properly, properly packaged destinations for people to visit and learn about our arts and our culture, uh, there's a lot to be to be made from it. So it's an area that I think government needs to um, deliberately force attention on. Everything in Lagos is very unique and also this is a place where if you can work hard you make it. It's just like going to New York. New York is the city of but Lagos as New York is growing, Lagos is growing faster. The potential for return on whatever you invest in in Lagos, because of the large consumption of the population, it makes sense to bring the global dollar here. There's political stability. There's economic stability now, with at least with regards to the foreign exchange, in that it's a free and floating exchange rate. Where else in sub-Saharan Africa would you put your dollar that you will expect a, a, a rate of return based on the consu pos consumption possibilities that Lagos exhibits. Please, bring your dollar to Lagos. Next year, Lagos State turns 50 and the government has lined up activities to showcase to the world the unique achievements, culture, heritage and the tourism potentials of the state. Lagos at 50 is about the opportunities in Lagos State the cultures of Lagos, the economies of Lagos, the policies of Lagos, the everything of Lagos State in the last 50 years. So it's not just about culture, it's about the economies of Lagos, it's about the lives of Lagos, the sounds of Lagos, all the opportunities, the progresses that make Lagos to be Lagos is what Lagos at 50 is all about. And we are incredibly happy to have Professor Wale Shoyinka and Chief Badamosi as co-chairmen uh, driving uh, this, this particular uh, initiative. There are a series of events, some from the government's uh, Ministry of Tourism celebrating uh, uh, the One Lagos brand, which also coincides with the year of Lagos at 50. So we're branding Lagos on its 50th anniversary. There is so many activities. You are going to be seeing a year on the street on parade. You are going to be seeing a great women will be riding on Agere. You are going to see the indigo dyers on the street. They will be dyeing cloth. There is so many things that is lining up for Lagos at 50. We just pray all of us are there with good health, no malaria. So we are going to be celebrating the good time of Lagos. There's always something new in Lagos anyway. And there's nothing wrong with uh, states sort of uh, doing a reprise of their entire existence after so many years. It's a normal thing. It won't only be Lagos. Other states were created uh, around the same time. Uh, the only difference is that uh, Lagos sort of tempted one towards a structure of starting early and then just bringing up some highlight, cultural highlights within the city. It could be any other city, but I think we'll all agree that Lagos happens to be special. We all have a stake, I think. It's true to say everybody has a stake in Lagos. I don't want to spoil the surprise for you. I, I will let uh, the committee unveil what they're doing. Uh, and um, I am sure Lagos will be delighted. I want to tell the foreigners to come and see the handmade creativity, art, food, uh, dressing, uh, everything that is hand done. You are going to be seeing it in this gallery. You are also going to be seeing it all over Lagos. Please come and see Nigeria and come and see Lagos at 50. Lagos may not be the first place that comes to mind when you think tourism. 
But given the amount of people living and coming into this attractive mega city and the plans in place to boost the sector, it is safe to say that when it comes to tourism in Africa, Lagos is one to watch. I am Didi Akielure. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Destination Lagos.